This video today is about a controversial topic. You see, I put up a video on my Instagram that went viral and also got a lot of hate. Comments, DMs, emails, death threats, you name it, I got it. And I wanna talk about it today, and I have a special guest who is going to help me do that. Her name is Deepna, and she is a girl who grew up in Karachi, Pakistan, and she is going to tell us about her life. But before I begin, let me first take a few minutes to tell you why this all became so interesting to me in the first place. I posted a little reel on Instagram about my positive experience in Lahore, Pakistan, as a girl of Hindu origin. If you want to see the original post, there's a link in the description. The gist of it is that people were just really, really welcoming from the border agents at the Wagga border that I walked across to get to Pakistan to the people that I met in Lahore. And I was genuinely surprised that people were extra welcoming when they learned that I was Hindu and that I was of Indian origin. I was just speaking about my own experience in this reel. I did meet another Hindu, one person when I was there who was from Sindh and he told me about a community that is almost all Hindu, like the majority Hindu. I wish I had footage. Unfortunately, I lost my camera and computer and hard drive in Sudan during the war, but I will be returning to Pakistan for that reason very, 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 very soon. And I will be posting about it. Of course, this was a positive video about Pakistan. So I got positive comments from them, but on the Indian side, there were definitely some lovely comments, but there were many, many angry ones. I actually didn't post this for like a year and a half. And then I decided, you know what? I think it, is important to talk about my positive experience. Like at this point in time, I think a lot of people think that it's not even possible for there to be a large, vibrant, educated, well-to-do Hindu community in Pakistan. So how did people respond? This person said, thank you for your fake information. The girl who is posting this nonsense is being paid by the Pakistani government because the Western countries and IMF are putting pressure on the Pakistani government to improve relations with India. I wish I were that important. <laughs> there were quite a few people that were like, this is propaganda. She has a tiny brain full of dung. People are really hoping that my Indian visa is revoked. The persecution of Hindus and abduction of Hindu girls and raping and converting them is not history, but the current reality of Hindus of Pakistan. You can whitewash the Hindu genocide as you deracinated NRIs hardly care about ongoing Hindu persecution and their ongoing genocide and rape. And it would be better if you do not identify as a Hindu or an Indian anymore. Of course, the tension between India, Pakistan, Hindus, Muslims runs deep, and I know that. But what really got me and what really made me want to dig deep into this was this widely cited statistic that so many people messaged me, commented with, and it's patently untrue that there was once 22% Hindus in Pakistan, and now there are 1.8%. Where did they disappear? This is obviously a sign of genocide. I saw a statistic, so I had to look it up because that's what I do. And when I did, I saw that it was misinformation. <laughs> It really upsets me that in this day and age in the modern world where information is so readily available at our fingertips, it's so difficult to know what the truth is. What is the truth about Hindus living in Pakistan? Do they exist? And if they do exist, what kind of lives are they living? This isn't an easy question to answer because there isn't one answer. When you think of Hindus in Pakistan, you think of oppression, forced conversions, forced marriage, rape, kidnappings, etc. Now these things are definitely happening and not just to non-Muslims, to minority Muslim groups as well. However, there seems to be a positive narrative that's not being told. In my quest to reach out to Hindus living in Pakistan and listen to firsthand perspectives, I heard a side of the story that's left out of popular media narratives. There are people who benefit from divisions between Hindus and Muslims. So what you see in the news is not necessarily the entire story and sometimes it's straight misinformation. So the goal here is to add nuance and give you a more complete picture. By the way, I wanna make it clear that for me, the points I'm trying to make has nothing to do with defending Islam, defending the Pakistani government, and certainly not the Pakistani army. <laughs> it's
It's about defending our shared humanity. Everything else is for a different discussion. Now, my experience doesn't negate the fact that Pakistan has a history of religious intolerance. It is not a secular state, and I don't think Pakistanis will deny that fact. The point is that there are over 200 million Pakistanis, and there are many, many who are so tolerant and so welcoming. From a national security perspective, yes, India has to be cautious and vigilant, but from a humanity perspective, we shouldn't let the actions of a few justify hate of an entire group. There are 200 million something people there. It's a very, very big country, and there are many, many tolerant and welcoming people. And I think it is so important that we acknowledge that and that we promote that, we engage with that, we ally ourselves with those people because those are the ones who are going to create the reforms that are needed in society. So I put up a story on Instagram and said, hey, Hindus of Pakistan or anybody who knows Hindus of Pakistan, please reach out to me, tell me your stories. And Deep now connected with me and she's public on Instagram. So I see her posts and whatnot. She's got like 30,000 followers and she went viral because she was posting about doing Hindu things as a Hindu girl in Karachi. And she got the same backlash. She got so much negativity and people shaming her for just talking about her life. In this video, I have a long conversation with Deepna to hear what her life is like in Karachi in the Hindu community. So without further ado, I would like you to listen to Deepna. Deepna, can you tell me what your life has been like as a Hindu girl growing up in Karachi? Hi, so this is a question that I most come across. Okay, so the first statement that I would want to go give is whatever I will speak is something coming from my experience and I'm not at all speaking in behalf of every Pakistani Hindu person. So for me, whenever I used to tell anybody, oh, I am Hindu, they were interviewed by, okay, you are Hindu and how is your religion about? So basically, I always love that limelight of being from a minority community. And when people were like, so much concerned about me my safety and about my festivals so it was always so fun to let people know how my religion is and to specially you know remove the misconception that people generally have they, that is driven from the media the uh, the politics and everywhere okay so let's say that it is a hindu holiday and you're in karachi and you are going to celebrate what would that be like yeah so one thing is like I live in a community that is all about Hindus. So like in preparation, there were Sri Swaminarayan temples across across South Asia. So one of the Sri Swaminarayan temple is still in Karachi and it is one of the largest practicing and believing Hindu community that lives there. So all around the community, it's Hindu families and in between there is a temple and a ground. So all the people from the Karachi visit that temple during the festivals. So either be Janmashtami, Holi, uh, Navratri, uh, Ganesh, itself, all the festivals are celebrated there in full swing, full liberty, freedom, and at a higher scale. So for me, each of the festival brings so much of excitement that I'm always so excited and look looking forward to the festivals. I'm so sorry. Do you want me to repeat it or it's fine? No, no, don't worry about it. You were talking about festivals. And I think it's so fascinating because I think just the fact that it exists and you're able to freely celebrate would be a shock to many people in India. Certainly my parents were surprised and I, I too didn't expect that. So I'm curious how large is the Hindu community in Karachi? I cannot say about the stats, but overall the people have an assumption that I went through my social media is like when it was the partition time, the number of Hindus were extremely more than at today. So there are two things uh, that we need to consider here. It was like East Pakistan and West Pakistan. East Pakistan, which is currently Bangladesh, has more significant Hindus than as compared to comparison to the left West Pakistan. And yes, the number has decreased, but the reality is there are still so many numerous Hindus living in Pakistan especially in Sindh, interior Sindh and in Karachi, in uh, different region of Karachi. So there are many because uh, initially uh, Indians were so surprised to know that, okay, Pakistani Hindus do exist. They just don't exist, but they exist in such a numerous and a larger quantity. Because in my family, my friends, everybody that I know around, 
there's only two to three stories that I've heard about people migrating to India. But so far, my ancestors are from Pakistan. None of my family members or second or third family members have shifted to India. I wouldn't say not in abroad, but not in India in the say in the term of safety and security. Okay, so something else that's talked about a lot is what is taught in schools in Pakistan, what's taught about Hinduism specifically. Can you talk about your experience in school and what you learned? Were there negative things about Hinduism? Did you have to learn the Quran? So as I said, it should be as organic as my life experience have been. So putting it truly, the only thing that I believe and um, Okay, so the only thing that I believe is the textbooks that includes chapters of Islam in Urdu and Sindhi should not be there. Uh, the Islamic topic should be restricted towards the Islamiyat or the Islamic study subject, not in otherwise. And this is something topic which is highly debated at present, like in past few decades, people are working over this that now our religious perspective should be restricted towards certain subject and not overall. So this is something that I... Uh, always raise my voice for other than that a uh, textbook and i would say pakistan studies is a subject that would obviously talk about history so it just puts light okay india partition thing other than that no uh the textbook were always neutral always you know religious culturally friend uh, friendly and i never expect any such discrimination based on the education system especially okay so did you have muslim friends when you were in school did people mix or did they stay separate in different groups based on religion okay so for this i have a strong um say that firstly in my school grades primary and secondary school i was started i was studying in a christian school saint patrick so gladly i had christian community there muslim community and i was being hindu so minority did exist in my school in the form of christian and uh, hindu so i never feel a sort of separation I feel when I was just a kid of five or six, five to six, seven age bracket, at that moment, kids used to say, oh, I cannot drink water from your glass, from your water bottle because you are from certain background. But as growing, I realized today's generation, the educated one don't give a shit about who you are, from which background you are, religious, culturally, they see you as a human, most importantly. And surprisingly, if you're from other community, they would love you and they would love to know about you. So I feel as the time changes, people are getting literated, educated, and we as a generation is growing up, we don't care about whatsoever our parents or our, you know, and sister mindsets were. We are creating our own sense of harmony and, you know, acceptance, especially at present Pakistan, in Karachi, there is a, a minority march where a number of people from all different religious, cultural backgrounds to participate and fight for the right of minority. I, and when people usually ask, there is a number of conversion, rape and everything. I do not deny that they do exist. But the positive side is people are getting to know about it at present. Earlier, there used to be nobody knew. Today, I have seen my friends, Muslim friends throughout Instagram, social media. They raise their voice for the fight of minority conversion. They raise their voice in the case of any rape and abduction and everything. So this is a positive uh, lens that I think we need to see. People are knowing, getting to know about it because people are sharing it. Because uh, there is so much awareness going around. And who is doing that? Of course, Muslims are doing that. The educated, the liberal ones. For me, also the point was like, okay, if 30% there is a negative image that has been painted about Pakistan, how they treat minority, then there should also be portrayal of the 60% of the positive image that exists about Pakistani minorities. That Pakistan is giving full liberty, freedom, police protocol, acknowledgement to the minorities usually ministers do come for the religious events there's a minority day celebration in pakistan in our temple and whenever there is police there uh, whenever there is any festival there is a police protocol outside the community that so that for a protection so yeah so in the comments i saw people reference blasphemy laws quite a few times like this person who said in pakistan if somebody accuses you of blasphemy you can be beaten to death at any time if you eat outside or in front of any Muslim during Ramadan. In Pakistan, you can be beaten to death or arrested for simply eating food. So just in your experience, what is it like? Do you fear these laws? Do you feel like people are going to come after you because of them? What is the atmosphere like around blasphemy laws? So gladly, 
I belong to a community that is so privileged, I would say educated, that when we have that sort of discussion, there's always space of understanding. So blasphemy, you know, claims for blasphemy comes from a community who are just so involved in the extremism society viewpoint that they don't actually create a room for a discussion. So personally, when I speak with my Muslim friend, give viewpoint about their uh, under, uh, religious understanding, uh, shares my, share my belief. I personally never experienced that, again, because I belong to a well liberal educated background. Given that we have always seen a blasphemy case in Pakistan that creates hype within a night and the issue is something else and that turn out to be something different. This is a real problem and that blasphemy has a ripple effect in a sense that for a day or two, we get more secured about our society that, okay, we should be concerned about something that has happened somewhere. So this is a problem again, I would want to say like, I remember past few cases, the blasphemy was not proved. So the all the educated people on the social media uh, started a campaign that please do research, do not make more fear about our minorities. They have a life to live. So again, I would say there's, you know, up and down balance going on that there's this part of society that wants to bring so much of hatred in the name of religion. And against them, there is an educated, literate and open-minded people, Muslim people that are saying, okay, first, you know, have a research rather than making an assumption and creating, you know, so much of, uh, so much of hatred and hate comments about certain religious people, because then they, what actually happen is like, then their life continues in fear. Okay, so you are someone who is active on social media. You have 30,000 followers on Instagram. So when you posted about your life in Karachi as a Hindu, what happened? Yes, yeah, so I actually, with three or uh, two of my cousins, made a TikTok trending reel with no intention to make it go so viral that I am a Pakistani Hindu and I do exist and we are happy here. So all the backlash and comments that I received were a mixture of some praise and some so much of hatred that they made me believe that I'm not an, not enough of a Hindu, that I'm talking in favor of country or my, how can I read scriptures in Urdu? So one thing is like people need to understand religion, country and language are three different separate entities. Just because I'm Pakistani and I read my scriptures in Urdu doesn't make me any less Sanatan Dharmi or any less Hindu. And then people were like, your ancestors should would be ashamed of you of the video that you have made this. No, my ancestors are from Pakistan, either it from paternal or mother's side. They all are from Pakistan. So they were pretty happy living here. They never migrated. I received lots of DM about people saying, oh, I, our family migrated to India during the partition time. And we still talk about how our life would have been if it would have been in Multan, Karachi, Lahore. So, you know, it was like there's just a political border, but so much of resemblance and mutual feeling from both the sides. I would say if I received 20% of the hate comment that were majorly from Indians, but 80% was also positive from Pakistan and India. And my objection was only to portray the positive side that exists in Pakistan, because always uh, the picture that is being painted is about how, what is wrong being happening in Pakistan and never about what is right being done there. And people were surprised to know that, okay, I know about my religion. I do arti or I know mantras. Of course we would know because living in a country doesn't define that. What do you believe in practice? So that was one thing. And yeah, and one more opinion that people were having that I'm doing wrong to the Hindu that is actually facing all this. So I never had that intention. And being, I also went to the minority march. I have raised voice, uh, written down documents whenever needed. So for a second, obviously, when receiving so much of hate comment that you have never experienced before, I was like, did I did something wrong? But at the end of the day, it was the acknowledgement from the uh, people that was coming along with the hate comments that, okay, you did the right thing and you haven't said anything wrong. You shouldn't be ashamed of that. And there's no point of you even having a doubt of what you said. I really feel this is the, you know, the political, uh, politics had a lot of influence on the partition of this uh, India-Pakistan. But today, 
I really wish to visit Vrindavan as a religious pilgrimage or because we are not allowed to visit India on the basis of religious pilgrimage or tourist visa. It's a very exhausting procedure. But I really wish this would have been easier for us, especially Pakistani Hindus to visit India for many given reasons. Like I want to, I wish to visit Mathura, Vrindavan, Jagannath, Puri and not what and to especially have the vegetarian food in India but the procedure I don't know it's so difficult so exhausting and requires so much you you know filtration my mother had a visit last to uh, she went to India to visit her rel relatives in 2019 but then again it was a very long procedure it, it took around six to seven months just to get the papers then a signature then go there have you know police query and everything so it was an exhausting one though can I just say, I know that getting hate comments sucks. It really sucks. It can be really intense, especially if you've never experienced it before and you didn't expect it. You were just posting as a regular person, not a travel blogger. So I think it's amazing that you've still continued to speak out. And because I think it's so important that that positive side of things gets out into the world. It would be a shame to have more misinformation out there that's creating deeper, deeper divisions. Okay, so next topic, let's talk about Karachi. I have never been there. I only went to Lahore, I went to Peshawar, and then I went to Afghanistan. So I didn't have time. And I want to hear from you, what is Karachi like? And what is your favorite restaurant? What do you like to do for fun? Tell me about the city. Okay, so the first thing that comes in my mind when I listen about Karachi is like hot and then crazy because it's my heart because I have been living there and it's natural feeling that you have for the place that you have been brought up and crazy because Karachi is indeed crazy especially when someone is coming from the western world but yeah you can resemble it to Mumbai how you know the world is going on haphazardly but yet so intact it with its cultural integrity and Karachi, as I would say, is one of the largest metropolitan city of Pakistan. So it consists of people from all the cultural background and religious background. So it's very diverse at one place and it has lots of space for, you know, there are usual conferences happening around the Karachi. It's about culture. It's about religion. It's about literature. So when I think about Karachi, it's about my home, first of all where I have been brought up with full freedom for me. Yes, with full freedom, liberty. I have so many friends, including Muslim best friends. Definitely, I have my Muslim best friends and they are also surprised. In fact, my Muslim best friends have visited temples that is there in uh, Karachi. They have come for Diwali to sell and they even the Diya along with me. They came for Holi because I feel Muslims are really excited and my friends were really excited at how I actually celebrate and they are they always welcome my you know cultural diversity religious diversity so definitely Karachi is something that you know makes me emotional not like a very emotional but okay yeah it's home especially when you live abroad then you realize the real feeling and connection with your city the language the haphazardly it's growing haphazardly but yeah and as far as the food is concerned i'm vegetarian so this is one thing that i really feel that yeah pakistan is a muslim state which is why it has a lots of uh a non-vegetarian dish items in the menu everywhere be it street or cafes so this is something that really gave me a hard time finding vegetarian options in karachi but obviously i found out my ways that okay i can eat pizza without chicken or uh pasta without chicken so but still the street food like pani puri chaat we always have something in our mind okay this street is something i would want to have the food from and i belong to you know the post uh, the post pre-partition era of karachi which is consists of historical buildings that all the development that britishers also did so that part of the karachi all also has its you know references towards Hinduism in itself. For example, there's a place, Bans Road in Karachi, which is very famous. So the grill of the, uh, the balcony grill of the houses still has Om and Ganesh sign in itself. Because that was about, that were the houses of the people, Hindu people living in pre-partition. 
So the old Karachi that I live in speaks about the history and pre-partition era and the old architectural sites. In fact, the gated community Sri Swaminayan Mandir that I live in is also about pre-partition and the houses are like 150 years ago that I live and my family live in. So I feel like uh, when I talk about Karachi, I also carry a perception about the pre-partition Karachi. In fact, you know, in the British era, when there was British Raj, Karachi used to be so clean and so, you know, environment friendly that people from the England used to visit Karachi just to have the warm water of Arabian Sea, just to have that experience. Likewise, Mumbai and Karachi were the two main port cities gateway to you know subcontinent so Karachi has its own diverse history culture uh, religious bindings ethnicities and whatnot that's so exciting your excitement is getting me excited about returning to Pakistan I will definitely go to Karachi so excited and thank you so much for coming and talking to me today uh, it's it's an honor it's a pleasure it's very very informative thank you so much I hope I can see you in Pakistan that would be so cool if you plan to visit Karachi, do let me know because I'll go in December. But if you go before that, if you need any help, I have like cousins and of course, a lot of family members that could help you. And if it's in December, then I would be there personally too. So it would be a good chance. Oh, wait, I forgot. I wanted to ask you about what it's like to be a woman in Pakistan. Can you talk about that? So of course, uh, without any, you know, Putting it in a decorated form, being a woman in Pakistan is definitely tough in the sense that uh, pa Pakistani women don't ride bikes as in India and around the world. So they usually rely either on the public transport, which is very pathetic, or on, you know, private cabs and private autos, which obviously cost us more if we see it through a lens of everyday traveling. So trans in term of transportation, Pakistan is a bit difficult. And like if I have to wear a dress, uh, being in Germany, I can wear however, whatever I want. But in Pakistan, I have to have certain boundaries to how I dress up. Especially like, okay, if I'm wearing something, you know, Western sort of dresses like jeans, top, it would be more comfortable if I drive with my own private car. But if I'm using some public transport, it is recommend or it is usually seen that people wear some shalwar kameez or Eastern sort of dress. So your dressing is very much decided by the society. I mean, it's okay if I go and wear the Western, nobody would say anything to me because they're not allowed to. But, you know, all the gaze that I gaze that goes through to the ears, that's very, that's very, you know, not so good to have. And dressing and commuting is something two major concerns of women. And again, I would say that since I think I'm privileged enough to born in an educated higher middle class family, I have lots of privilege in terms of education, what I choose, the degree I choose. Uh, the partner I choose and everything, but there's a large number of people living in the, st still stuck in the patriarchal society of Pakistan. But uh, uh, gladly, uh, within past few decades, the change has been coming. Coming uh, every year, there's Aurat March. Uh, you know, on Women Independence Day, Aurat March that is Women's March, where women and transgender come uh, from all across across the cities and gather at a place and fight for their rights. So these are the changes. That I would say Pakistani society is in its transitional mode at the moment, where people are relatively fighting a lot about their rights. Uh, they are seeing number of people in the employment sector has been increased. Rate, education rate has been increased, as all we can see all around the world. But gladly, Pakistani society is changing. However, the patriarchal roots are very strong there. So I would say it will take lots of air for the people living in the interior regions in the underprivileged areas to come to get out of that cycle. But for me, being a woman was like easy. I would say that's yeah, just except the commuting and dressing thing, nothing personal or something life changing that I experienced or something very different that my brother and me went through. We were always treated same, given the situation we were born in. Yeah, same in India as well. It's definitely not as easy being a woman, but it also, you know, depends on where you are, of course. It's very, very different walking around Mumbai and in a certain neighborhood like Bandra would be very different than, say, 
somewhere in Delhi versus somewhere in a rural area where it would be like very, very, very conservative. And, but you know, and regardless uh, on public transport, I can't imagine myself ever wearing just what I would wear in a Western country. Like I definitely would not be wearing any of this. I cannot imagine that. But in this matter, Karachi would be far better than Lahore. I, I can say, I can guarantee you, yeah. Because being from Karachi, even exp uh, visiting, you know, when you'll visit Karachi, you'll experience a lot of difference in Lahore and Karachi also. Maybe you could do that. Uh, ha you can ex have a difference in Delhi and Mumbai. Likewise, there's a difference between Lahore and Karachi as well. So being from Karachi, you would feel having a different surrounding, even if you are in Lahore, although it's the same country. So I think Karachi would give you a better experience. I bet on that. Let's see how it turns out to be. In Lahore, I think I feel pretty good walking around as a woman. I didn't feel that weird, but at the same time, there was definitely a lot of staring. I just think I've become kind of immune to it. Like I don't notice. <laughs> so, yeah. So whatever you wear, that staring would be there, especially given in which neighborhood, again, you are. Interesting. Yeah. So then I went to uh, Peshawar and that was definitely much more conservative, but it wasn't as bad as people told me it was going to be like, and I didn't wear a hijab and I feel like. The staring was just equivalent. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Being a Hindu, I never wore any hijab because that's not something mandatory and that's something that, that is not integrated in my beliefs. So this is just a stereotype mentality that wearing a scarf or head scarf, no, no, no. That's completely okay to wear it. And also because Karachi is such a larger metropolitan city, so it has to create a space for every, you know, diverse dressing and everything in order to grow and grow. Okay, now I will actually let you go. Thank you so much. Bye. <laughs> I found that conversation really interesting. I hope you did too. I would like to say that I did not search for positive viewpoints, but the people that replied to me did have positive things to say. And I think that one, the people who are going to be on Instagram watching this reel, watching my stories are going to be the more educated people. I think also these people who might feel like their side of the story in Pakistan is not being told would be more likely to reach out and want to talk. I got messages mainly from people who were positive. I chose to talk to Deepna because she's already public and you can verify and actually like look at her Instagram and see Hindu celebrations happening and all of these things. Something to also keep in mind is that anybody in Pakistan who is not from a wealthier community is struggling because Pakistan is struggling as a nation. Economically and politically, the Pakistan army is very, very powerful. So I read this saying that the Pakistan army has never won a war, never lost an election. <laughs> uh, yeah. I know this was a different style video. I hope you liked it. I have a podcast actually that I've done a few episodes for, Lost with Lakshmi, and this is going to be a podcast episode all right there are some things i'm supposed to say like um you know leave a comment like subscribe i put out videos every week or every three months you know give or take <laughs> all right thanks guys bye